So one day you're around your grand's house and she says, you know what, I've got all these old cassettes that I want to play and yet I've got nothing to play them on. You say, well, why don't you just stream everything? She goes, no, I'd rather play my cassettes. And you go, what, you're seriously into Wu-Tang and the two live crew? She goes, yeah, because I'm not a real gran. I don't really exist. I'm just something that's been made up for an intro of a video on YouTube. You go, all right, fair enough then. I've seen this guy on YouTube, you say. He's got a channel where he has all these old cassette decks that he fixes up and they look really good and stuff. He's called Techno Man, I think. And she goes, well, I don't want an old cassette deck. I want a new one. I want one that works, that's simple to use. Perhaps something like a boombox. You say, what, a grand boombox? That's a pretty cool thing for someone your age to say. She goes, yeah, remember again, I don't actually exist. However, I want a new boombox. What's available? And you say, all right, I'll go and have a look and see what I can get. And that is where this comes in. Now, this particular boombox, I know people get angry sometimes when I say boombox, when it's like a little small cassette radio thingamajig, but that's pretty much what they're generally known as. So we'll just have to live with it. Although, if you want, you can call it what it says on the side of here, which is a bum box. So yeah, this bum box is one that's been recommended to me by a chap called Matthew. He sent me an email and said, you might not be aware, but this one actually has a cassette on it and it might be worth testing out because it's better than that Sony one you reviewed. It's got better bass, richer sound on it. Now, again, of course, like we mentioned before, all cassette decks are using the same crappy mechanism. So you're just going to live with that. However, the rest of this, well, that might be quite decent in sound quality, which even a crappy mechanism linked up with uh, decent speakers is going to sound better than a crappy mechanism linked up with crappy speakers like those terrible Aldi boomboxes, in quotes, that I reviewed. But when this arrived, I thought, hold on, they've sent the wrong thing. The reason being is because it doesn't mention cassette on it anywhere. We've got DAB plus radio, Bluetooth, CD, MP3, FM radio, which has digital tuning, USB direct, and an audio in. And that's it. No mention of cassette. Now, I thought, well, it must say it's somewhere on the box. No, on the top it's the same. Stream your music, DAB+, play MP3, CD, and CDRW, USB direct for music playback. So that's it. That's everything it does, apparently, according to this. Uh, let's flip it around the other side. No, even on the French side, this bum box, no mention at all of cassette. However, one thing I did notice, it does seem to have the transport keys for a cassette player. Let's zoom in a bit. But definitely I can see that those are transport keys and this is here as well. We've got play and pause, uh, skip forward and back. So those will be the CD player, the MP3, all that kind of stuff. So these ones up here, these must be for the cassette mechanism. So the thing that gets me about this is that it's from Philips, the inventors of the compact cassette. And yet they seem to be ashamed that this device has a compact cassette in it. Either that or they've just completely forgot. But it seems more like they're trying to show it as something a bit kind of modern and Bluetooth and DAB+. And they don't really want you to know it's got a cassette deck in, which is a shame because a new cassette deck available in the stores is something that some people would like. But as you can see here, it's actually from TP Vision Europe BV. So it's not a product of Philips, it's more a product of badge engineering. Short user manual, okay. Now I'm getting a bit concerned again because believe it or not in here, there's no mention made of cassette again. I can see a CD getting put into one here and there's a USB stick there. There's a remote control and things I think, but uh, there's no pictures or mention of a cassette anywhere in this piece of paper, on this piece of paper. But all right, well, let's get it out. We'll find out in a second. Now this cost me, I think about 135 pounds in the UK. A little bit expensive, but then again, maybe it's got decent sound quality. I'm not expecting much out of it, but if it's better than that Sony one, then that'll be a positive. Although that one was only about 40 quid. It looks like it's had an injury, but I think we just need to take that off. That's just to stop it opening up. Okay, now, here's the moment of truth. I can see that this one's an eject button. Let's see what ejects. Look! The secret cassette deck. I hope there's a mech in there. Oh yeah, there is. <laughs> it looks a bit dark. It's one of those ones where you put the cassette in with the tape at the top and all the heads are up here. Of course, it's going to be one of those awful mechanisms. We'll just have a look at that now. Now, if you saw my video about the last cassette mech standing, you'll be aware that that particular mechanism that's used by everybody now is easy to spot because it has a spring in it with a loop in the middle. And sure enough, dead centre of your screen now, that is the telltale spring. So yes, this is using the Tadashin cassette mech. 
not surprising it's the only one anyone could buy but there you go at least it's got a cassette mech in it <laughs> i thought for a minute that door wasn't going to open and there's going to be nothing inside it's not a very attractive looking bum box this one a uh, very bulbous uh, base ports down here woofer and tweeter um, behind this rubber panel here that's where the usb port is the source button no doubt cycles between them we'll turn it on in a second uh, cd player on the top here with a push down to get into it thing remove this card before operating this unit so best do that so yeah clearly all built to keep the cost down although it did cost 135 pounds or was it 139 pounds anyway it's quite a bit so it wasn't too cheap what have we got on here um headphones now there's the thing is it going to be in stereo it should be but you can't guarantee it now i'm going to have a look at that cassette door in a minute see if it's got a stereo head on there audio in power button which is a momentary switch what's around the back here you can see by the way i'm spinning it around it doesn't weigh too much um now battery compartment now that's handy i know it sounds silly but i've bought boom boxes in the past was it that sony one one of them didn't have a, a battery compartment on it which i thought was a bit daft so there's our power input here uh ac mains doesn't say what the specs are anything on the bottom they're still claiming it's a phillips and um yeah no it's not multi-voltage 220 to 240 50 60 hertz 15 watts takes six d cell batteries you can see we've got a big play key here rewind fast forward stop eject and pause which of course means that record is missing but again as i mentioned at the beginning in my fictitious grand story quite a lot of people just want something to play old tapes and this will do that well at least in theory it will let's plug in the power and see if it works oh i didn't mention aerial on the back so i'll spin it around I'm going to turn on the plug socket now let's see what happens see if it's got like a standby mode no it's it, when it's off it's off by the looks of it so we'll switch it on okay the first thing it's trying to do is find a cd it won't find one see how long it takes to fail and there we go oh we wanted to have a look at this uh, cassette head didn't we just to see whether or not it was stereo or mono shouldn't have to check these things but nowadays who knows okay i think you can just about make out there it's uh, very difficult to get this angle on camera but that's a stereo playhead so that's uh, that's a bit of a relief right so i've got some music from the youtube audio library we'll just pop that in here and uh hmm, it's a pretty nasty cassette mechanism very sharp edges all around this thing no expense spent but anyway let's have a listen right now where's the volume is it this one there we go that's a bit of a weird volume dial it's oh it's, it's the middle bit that you turn okay um i don't know if you can hear me over this i think you can it's um it's not got much bass that's powerful now let's see it's going to be this one i think to change between them let's have a listen right so if that's powerful what's the next one along clear bright that's not the same thing warm and balance none of these are very bassy at all so from the options you've got i'd say powerful is the one to leave it in that seems to be the default and it's the one that sounds the best to me out of the bunch anyway clear and bright just sound thin and tinny warm sounds muffled and balanced well i can't really tell too much difference between that and powerful so you might as well just leave it in powerful because i think that's where it will start each time but i definitely think calling it powerful is overstating it somewhat because as far as i'm concerned there's no kind of thump to the bass there's no real richness it sounds okay it's passable you can listen to stuff on it without it really getting too much on your nerves but it just doesn't have any body to it at all it is quite thin to say it's got these sort of bass ports and reasonably sized speakers on here they could have done a lot better with something of this size right now let me double check the stereo on here i'm pretty sure it is stereo it sounded like it was then but i've got my stereo test tape here which is uh, just a couple arguing over directions in a car so let's have a listen to that 
right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Yeah, definitely stereo, so that's good news. I mean, it could have had a stereo head in there and then a mono amplification circuitry afterwards. Of course, DAB plus radio often has uh, stations that broadcast in mono, so they could have got away with it in a way. Uh, in fact, let's, uh, let's have a listen to DAB plus if we can. So no doubt I press the source. What have we got here? Audio in, disc, USB, DAB. That's the one. Right, so now there'll be, uh, what's this, all scan? Full scan. Oh, it must be full scan that's scrolled. Yeah, it's a weird scroll, isn't it? Okay, let's uh, press. Uh, is this going to be an OK? No, let's figure it out. Is that OK? Ah, I can see it's written on it. OK, well, that'll do. We'll press OK. So now it should be scanning the DAB stations. Of course, I've always got the option of reading the instructions, but who wants to do that when you can uh, have a play around and get it all wrong over and over again? I've got to say, this screen on here, it looks a lot sharper than it does through the camera. I'm looking at the screen on the back of the camera here. It all looks kind of faded out. In person, it looks nice and clear. So I don't know if that's something to do with filters or whatever. I mean, if you sort of guarantee you get yeah. the speed they promised or money back. O double three o one two three twelve fifteen. Name that. Well, that was nice. Just to go straight to that. What I was going to say is, at certain angles, you might be able to see it looks a little bit better. But yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're on absolute radio. Now we've got to be careful here because we've got to skirt around the content match issue. So let's find a station that is not going to be playing music. If we skip through them quick enough, we can have a listen, can't we? Here we go, let's turn it up a bit. Hurry up! Back on the road. Excludes Jimny, participating dealers only. Minimum contract length applies. Suzuki Financial Services Limited. T's and C's apply. See cars.suzuki.co.uk slash offers. Whether you're dreaming of a house the size... <laughs> One of the greatest albums of all time. Now, can I point out something there? It sounds a lot better on the radio than it did on the cassette. It's got a, I can feel the bass then. This uh, counter is vibrating a little bit. I mean, not like uh, all the winds are gonna break or anything, but there was definitely something going on that wasn't happening on the cassette. I'll try another tape later on just to be sure that it wasn't that particular tape. I've got some that are pretty bass heavy that we can have a listen to. Suara broke her PB for the 10K <gasps> and Paul has started yoga. What? Chit chat turned to a genuine conversation with a lovely man. Actually, you don't have to comment at every ball. <laughs> right. I've got to say, the radio is actually pretty good on this. It's picking up a load of stations very easily. I haven't even put the aerial up properly. And in this room, I get loads of interference normally, but it's getting a really good signal. So that is a positive. And it sounds a heck of a lot better. Well, maybe not this station, but once you get a station with a decent um, bandwidth, it sounds a heck of a lot better than the cassette does. It's much richer. So the actual speakers on here aren't as bad as I thought. It's just the source that goes into them is uh, very important. One thing to say though, it takes a lot of time to go through the stations this way. It looks exciting to start with it. You've got loads of them, but then if you want to get to the one at the other end, yeah, that's, uh, that's taken me quite a while. There must be some way of doing it a little bit better. We've got program here. There we go. We can store our favorites. Best turn that down. Oh, I've stalled that one as a favourite now. Uh, Hits radio. Right, I was trying to find out how many presets it had on DAB and FM so I could tell you. In the end, I found out by pressing the buttons and seeing what it went up to, which was 20. But looking through the specs here, it does mention the cassette deck ever so briefly. Uh, frequency response, 125 to 8,000 hertz. Uh, signal to noise, 35 decibels. Wow and flutter, under or equal to 0.4% which is garbage really because I just repaired a, a 1975 cassette deck the other day it was uh, knackered I took it all apart and put it back together it got 0.17 at the end of it and that wasn't good back in 1975 so 0.4% uh, hmm. but it doesn't matter because uh, hey who plays cassettes anymore you might as well just give them something rubbish right well it's a shame because yes this machine will play cassettes and um, there aren't many things on the market you can buy new that will do. It's using that crappy cassette mechanism. And on top of that, it's doing something to the sound where it's just not getting any bass at all out of a cassette. And um, cassettes do have some pretty decent bass on them. If you get the right cassette and this machine, whatever it is that you put in it, it's not going to reproduce it properly, unfortunately. And if you don't know, now you know. But hey, if you want to play them, it'll play them. Just not very well. The headphone output is in stereo. I mean, you shouldn't really have to test these things, but nowadays you can never be too sure of stuff. 
Now I've noticed that when you put a tape in, it moves into the tape mode. However, if I now put a CD into it, it won't automatically go back into the CD mode. So I need to press this source button here. And there we are, we're on the CD now. So let's just have a listen to this. This is from the YouTube audio library. The compact disc will not display CD text, which is no massive surprise, but there are a couple of options here. You can see I can repeat the current track, repeat all the tracks on a CD, shuffle the CD, or repeat and shuffle all the tracks on a CD. We might as well test out the other features while we're here, so let's try to connect up via Bluetooth. There we go. And there it is showing up on my phone, so we'll just connect up. This should be relatively easy. Okay, we'll just stream this file off my phone. Seems to be connected up. Yeah, there we go. I'm not too sure about this volume knob. I could do it being able to reach the edges of it. If you've got a slide your finger you're not able to adjust it properly but anyway there we go that bluetooth's working so uh, i think the only thing i could try now that i haven't done so far well i suppose i could put an mp3 cd in here but rather than do that let's try and play some mp3s from the usb stick in the front it's taking a while to read it there's only a couple of files on there well this isn't great oh no file no file i'll tell you what mate there are files on there i put them on there myself now the question is, have I got this USB stick formatted to something that it can't read? That sounds plausible, although I'm pretty sure it's just FAT, F-A-T. Okay, it turns out the file format on this USB stick was XFAT, which is uh, a format that was introduced 14 years ago. But hey, too modern for this device, so uh, I've moved it back to FAT32, which I think dates back to 1996. So let's, uh, let's try playing that. Yeah, it looks like it's doing it now. So any second now, it should be able to find the, the five files that are on this USB stick. I've got to say, this does not seem to be the most efficient way to play MP3s, but uh, oh, what the heck's that? I'm looking for a file name. No, it's just track numbers. Okay. Oh, can't play that one. That was one of the content match type files. Let's move on. Track two. Right, so that was an MP3. Oh, it says it there on the screen. I don't know if you can read that. Yep, just about. MP3. Right, next one. Not a lot happening there, is there? Yeah, I'd say it looks like it can just about play MP3 files. No waves, no flak. Um, I can't remember what else I put on there. Oh, yeah, I put on an AIFF as well. So, yeah, um, just MP3s. That's all. That's all you're getting. And on a stick that's formatted to FAT32. So, yeah, not the best MP3 player in the world. OK, just one thing that I want to try on it before I sum this up. Let's just uh, stick the wow and flutter meter on it and see how that cassette deck stacks up as far as the stats go. OK, now, if you haven't seen this before, on the left, we're looking at the speed. On the right, we're looking at the wow and flutter. Now, the speed on this particular mechanism seems to be a bit odd. Occasionally, like at the moment, it's running itself around about 0.5% fast. And then it will bring itself back to zero, which is in the middle, and then it will move itself all the way off to the left-hand side, which would be around about 1% too slow. So the speed is not very regular at all on this mechanism. Now, if we look on the right-hand side, well, if we're looking at the top row there, we've got 1% at the top on the right, and the needle's bouncing around at about the kind of 0.4% position, going a little bit over there at times. So again, not very impressive. But yeah, there's the drift on the left, that one just seems to work its way all over the place during the course of it playing a cassette. So I went for a coffee, I've come back and I see the speed's off the scale now, so let's move it to 3% at the top. Yeah, so it's running about 2% fast now. Now, since I've only got quick start guides, I thought I'd have a look online to see if there's any more information there about the product, perhaps a full manual. Here it tells me to visit philips.com support, but it also says that the Philips name and logo are being used under license by MMD Hong Kong Holding Limited. So that's who's making this product. But yeah, if we look on the Philips website, we can see that this um, particular device started being sold in September 16. One reason I wanted to look at the manual was that I saw this button on here labelled DBB. I don't know if you can just make that out. And I wasn't too sure what that was. I assumed it was some kind of bass boost. I thought maybe digital bass boost. Anyway, it turns out that it is dynamic bass boost. It's got uh, three settings. You can have off and then strength one and two. 
it auto defaults to one, so I'm going to try two in a moment to see if that makes cassettes sound any richer. Also, the remote control, we haven't mentioned that yet. I've got to say, very nice little remote control. It's infrared, of course, just takes one AAA battery. I think there's an additional button here. There might be a couple, in fact. I've got dim, which will dim that display. So there you go, you can turn the backlight off if you want to. And there's access to a sleep timer on here as well, if you're interested in that kind of thing. But yeah, uh, it's a nice little remote, that. There's a couple of additional pieces of information from the manual that I've noticed here. Maximum output power, two times four watt. Well, I'm looking at the box behind me now and it says 12 watts of powerful sound wirelessly. So I don't know where the rest of the sound has gone, but it's not inside the machine. And as far as the supported file formats go, well, it is just MP3s down at the bottom here. It lists unsupported formats and it's pretty much everything else that you can think of. And then finally, just a little bit of information here. Demagnetizing the heads. Use a demagnetizing tape available at your dealer. Yeah, good luck finding one of those. Right, I've had a bit of a play around with this DBB button. Earlier on, I was listening to the cassettes with it on setting one, which is the default. I put my own music in here and had a good listen to some tracks that should have decent bass and tried it on number two as well. And I've got to say, it didn't really add anything to the experience. It just sounded a little bit more muffled and switching it off made it sound a little bit thin. So the default of number one, the one we were listening to already, was the best. So returning back to the scenario with which we started, would Gran be happy playing her Slick Rick cassette back on this bum box? Well, I'd say that she'd be happy enough that she could hear her cassettes again, so a cassette player is better than no cassette player in that regard, but the cassette part of this is by far the weakest part of it, as well. And you can get plenty of other boom boxes with CD players and radios on, which might be cheaper than this and have better sound as well. Unfortunately, though, you can't get very many cassette boom boxes. There's just a handful of them, and it's possible, I say just possible, that this might be the best one currently on the market, which, if it's true, is a very sorry state of affairs. But if you're interested, I've got more information about this one in the video description text box. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.